Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news and a recap for the week ending the 11th of November. Talking about the anniversary sale, roadmap updates, RSI sub updates, calling all devs, around the verse, reverse the verse, and mods in Spectrum, amongst other things. The anniversary sale. So every year they have a Star Citizen anniversary sale that's typically held at the end of November. Last year it was held from the 24th of November and had a different ship manufacturer each day with a video of progress on some of the ships that that ship manufacturer had made. So we saw things like the Orion doubling in size, we saw bits on the Bami Merchantman, things like that. Limited ships go back on sale, typically most of them. Sometimes we have capital ships on sale, like the Javelins and Idris. And at the end of the sale, they enabled most of those ships to be purchased on like the, the weekend, just like all of them. Um, so there was also a couple of concept sales and UE land claims going on sale at the same time. So they typically have a few different things going on. This year, the anniversary is likely to be on Friday, or at least start on Friday the 23rd of November. And we have already had a tease from RSI's Twitter, all but confirming that the Anvil Arrow will be the new ship, or a new ship we will see on sale there. Though we don't know if it's a concept or if it's already going to be flyable for 3.3.5. It's the sort of tricksy thing they will chuck at us and we'll have to wait and see. It depends whether it's going to be used for Squadron 42 in the short term or not. Other potentials that we might see during the anniversary sale concept-wise are Titan Exosuits, the Drake Corsair, so that's Drake's answer to the constellation, things like that. Uh, there's potentially some other Squadron 42 or alien ships that could also appear. And because of the timing of 3.3.5, which is currently in Evocati, it's possible that they're trying to push for a 3.3.5 live build for that anniversary, so bear that in mind as well. They might tie in some sort of anniversary-esque activities, and um, whether it's screenshots or something else uh, that the community can do for that. So with that in mind, some roadmap updates. 3.3 is now live and it's pretty damn good performance-wise. Please make sure you delete your user folder, uh, or at least the shaders um, section of the user folder, uh, otherwise people are getting some crashes. Guides to all that sort of jazz down below. 3.3.5 is, as I said, now with the Evocati. Hopefully that will go to a wider PTU soon, as it's pretty much mostly gameplay area there. Getting the object container streaming in with the 3.3 branch, that was the major thing. It's still part of the 3.3 branch of the game, um, so hopefully much more stable and less needing of the Evocati testing, if you see what I mean, before it can go to wider PTU. And 3.4 is going to actually still remain on that 3.3 branch as well. And because of that, it's pushing some of its major content into 3.5 in March 2019. The big parts uh, that are getting pushed out being Arc Corp, the new flight model, and the female character additions. They're all delayed, basically. That is a shame, but it's um, good that they're getting back on track, and it, that should not diminish what they've actually done with 3.3, 3.3.5, and the other additions in 3.4. And if you want to know more about that, please check out my video uh, specifically going over all those roadmap updates and changes for the patches. The RSI subscribers will have access to the 600i Explorer for the rest of November. Uh, this month's subscriber flare is the red or purple leg armor. Centurion subs get the former and Imperator subs get both. There's also a subscriber program feedback and discussion going on at the moment, which I will link below. Um, as I said, those are for RSI voluntary subscribers um, to get involved with. Let's go through a quick summary of the week's official shows that have gone on. Uh, calling all devs, itemware will tick up in a percentage, showing how worn a component is. Once they have docking, multi-grid physics tech, and they um, will then start to work and get parasite docking, working for uh, the P-52, P-72, and similar ships. They are going to get ship to station docking working first and then ship to ship docking with them. They are working on better longer range headlights for ships, 
players will not be able to safely travel while offline to other star systems. Uh, star citizen experience is much more tactile and you have to actually um, go out and do things is the idea. You will actually have to travel between the systems yourself or at least be present when you're doing so. Uh, they are working on procedurally generating trains, stations, tracks, elevators and mass shafts for cities, getting all that automated. Uh, around the verse, so they're making tools to improve their cloud tech and improving the way that they do their game dev branches for the future to make them more efficient and stable so they can have game devs working on features quarantined from the main dev branch and then more easily remerge this with game dev when it's feature complete and then more easily build out branches um, for things like 3.4, 3.5, uh, that sort of stuff in the future. Reverse the Verse continued to talk about building out elements of Lawville, and was basically an extension of the CitizenCon presentation. Uh, volunteer mods and language rooms. So CIG have decided to get rid of their volunteer mods on Spectrum and bring moderation fully in-house. They are actively recruiting for moderator positions in various languages, but in the meantime, they've closed some of their non-English sections on Spectrum, which has obviously caused some polarization not being supported properly, although people can just create uh, organizations and that sort of stuff. Hopefully that will get resolved soon. I do understand why they are um, doing that. They are bringing it in-house because they, they are starting to expand. They are starting to have something a bit more mainstream and they need full control over their, um, their product, their game uh, and their communication. In the newsletter this week, there was a sneak peek of the updated freelancer variants, which are looking very freelancery. Uh, the Valkyrie as well. So on a side note, the Valkyrie is listed as the wrong size on the RSO website, which is why my brain thought that it would fit in a Javelin originally. It's listed as 29 by 38 meters, but it's actually 35 by 46 meters, significantly larger. I do really like the ship, but it is slightly too big for me to make use of. It's built to fit perfectly in a Bengal though. I don't own one of them. I have a Javelin. I wanted to fit in the Javelin. I mean, it will fit on a crack, and then obviously you can deploy it from um, stations and on planets and landing pads and stuff. I just wanted it to be able to take it around in a ship. If you'd like to discuss anything we talked about or add any additional news that I've missed or whatever, please chuck it down in the comments below. If you don't have Star Citizen yet, be sure to create an account with the links below to receive 5,000 UEC, the in-game currency, as a bonus and to participate in any free flight. Every month we have a ship giveaway for November. I am giving away a Saber Raven, Star Citizen game package, and a CitizenCon 2948 digital goodies pack. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details below. If you would like to further support the channel, the links to my Patreon and donations are down in the description below as well. If you are considering getting or upgrading your gaming PC for Star Citizen or any other game for that matter, instead consider the Shadow Cloud Gaming Service. It's a subscription-based service that leverages your internet connection to turn any appropriate device, whether it be an old PC, smartphone, tablet, and more into a powerful Windows 10 gaming PC. It's been working well in the latest 3.3.0 PTU patch of Star Citizen. I'm going to try and maintain a best practices guide on my website as well. More information is available in the links below, and if you do decide to try it, use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.